Hello everyone, my name is Mary Drapshow and I am one of the librarians in the Erie School District and welcome to Library Corner. Um, we thought that we would put um, some books on Channel 8 so that um, parents can see what we're doing in the libraries and see how libraries are changing in the school district. They aren't just full of books and reference materials and stuffy old ladies. Um, we have a lot of stuff online. We have a card catalog, an OPAC, an online public access catalog that can be used from home or in school or wherever you have an internet connection. And we have every student in the Erie School District has access to our um, card card catalog and our Follett shelf, which are books that are ebooks online. We have over a thousand of them. And so I wanted to show you some of those, but I also wanted to talk about some books because um, there are some gift buying situations coming up in the coming months. And um, I thought that maybe parents would like some hints on things to buy for the holidays. And I would like to read um, a book to the kindergarten through grade three set of kids and um, talk about things that we do in the libraries when we come in, when we're in kindergarten through grade three. So if I could begin with the Library Lion. <clears throat> Library Lion is written by Michelle Knudsen and it is illustrated by Kevin Hawks. And when we are in libraries right now, we're telling the students that um, every book has two, th has three things, and that is a title. Every book has a title. Every book has an author. Not every book has an illustrator, as we all know. And every book has keywords or subjects. So a keyword for this book, of course, would be lion, and another keyword would be library. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up to the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules, asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed a little nervous, but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story, and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour's over, a little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. Roar! <clears throat> Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise, she demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow, she asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. The next day, the lion came back. You are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. 
Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedia until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. Soon the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias, he licked the envelopes, he let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour, and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They had always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand the rules. They did not belong in the library. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back to the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute. Mr. McBee. But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. He put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down the hall toward Miss Merriweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of to do. He looked Mr. McBee right in the eye, then he opened his mouth very wide, and he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Roar! Mr. McBee gasped. You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked toward the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind her desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now please, go call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call the doctor. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. The next day, things were back to normal. Almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning the story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, or the day after that. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window. Her voice was very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought there probably was something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars. He looked behind bushes. He looked in backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. 
I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring allowed, unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new, sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. <gasps> Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. And so that was Library Lion. And I don't know if you noticed, but there were some words in the book, The Library Lion, that maybe you didn't know. And um, maybe we could talk about those books, or about those words. One of them was Stacks. Um, Stacks is the collection of books. Stacks is when you come into the library and you see all of the shelves of books, those are called the stacks. They are like stacks of books, and so that's what that word is. And Circulation Desk. I don't know if you know what Circulation Desk is, and that is where you check the books out. The books circulate, they go in, they go out, they, they travel around, and so they circulate and that's called the circulation desk. Um, one of the other words in the book was card catalog and a card catalog in a lot of libraries um, are they, the card catalog is gone. It was a very big piece of furniture. They are still seen in some of our public schools. Um, it's a very big piece of wooden furniture and it had drawers in it and every drawer had a letter or a series of letters and it was alphabetized and you would look for the books by author, title, or subject. And the card catalog drawers look something like this and they were very big and they you would open it up and you can see right here we have the word library and so I would go to library and I would see if I can find library lion. But library lion, this is so old this book in here, the book that I'm looking at right now is from 1960. Library Lion isn't even in here. And so you would go and you would look at the card and you would, and I'm going to take a card out and show you. You would look at the card and you would look for the call number and then you would go to the shelf and find that book. It was sort of a, a long process, but um, that's how we did it. And quite recently, we have updated our card catalog system. And so we don't need the card catalog uh, uh, furniture in our libraries anymore because everything is online. And we have the online public access catalog, OPAC. Ours is called Destiny. There, if you go to the public library, the Blasco Library or any of the branches of the Erie County Public Library, they have an online public access catalog as well. And, but it's not the same as the one in the Erie School District. The Erie School District tells you everything that we have in the libraries in the Erie schools. And so ours is called Destiny. And if you go to the Erie School District pages, you can click on students, parents, or staff, and you just press on there, and you're going to look for the words Follett Destiny District Library Catalog. And once you find that, you're going to press on that, and you are going to find the school that you go to. You can't, um, you I will tell you how you're going to search in the other in the other schools, but right now you have to go to your school. So if you go to Harding, you're going to press on Harding, which is in the K to eights, and you are going to see that Harding School comes up, and you have the the two tabs at the top are Home and Catalog, and so we're going to press on Catalog, and you'll see that you have three or four, actually there are five ways to search, but we talked about the, the three most important ones, the author, the title, and the keyword. Another word for keyword is subject. And you'll notice that there's also another button called series. And an example of a series is Goosebumps is a series, Harry Potter is a series, 
Um, Suzanne Collins wrote The Hunger Games, and that's a series. And so if you were looking for any of those books, you could put in um, Hunger Games and click on Series, and it would take you there. I am going to click on Library Lion, and I am going to type in the word Library Lion, and I am going to then search under Title. And I'm going to make sure that my location is the Harding School, and I'm going to see that we have one copy of Library Lion, and it's in the library. And so I know that I can go and I can ask the library assistant, Mrs. Parker, if that book is in the library, and she will, um, or I can just go right to the shelf because the author's last name is Knudsen, and I can go to the K section, K-N-U, and that book will be on the shelf. And then I can take it to the circulation desk and check it out and be on my merry way, if that's the book that I wanted. Okay, and so that's how the Destiny Library Catalog works if we were going to find the book Library Lion in the Harding School. Um, I'm going to go back just one click. I'm going to refine my search and Library Lion is still there. And instead of searching in Harding School, I am going to search the entire Erie School District and I'm going to hit title. And now you'll see that three library lions have come up, so they're in three different schools. And I can see what other schools library lion is in if I click on the details of those other books. And then I click copies. And I can see that it's at Perry Elementary as well. So we can see um, books all through the district and if Library Lion is not available at your library and you would like to check that out, just go to your library assistant and ask her if she could get that book for you and she will um, send an interlibrary loan request to that library and get the book for you. It's no problem at all. It's a great um, tool that we have and we can check at home uh, what books we have out. All we have to do is log in in the upper right hand corner left hand corner of the screen we can log in and if we are K through 5 we are going to log in with our ID number or your lunch number and you put in lunch number lunch number that's your uh, username and your password if you are grade 6 through 12 when you log into a computer in the Erie School District you put in your ID number and a password that you have made up and that is exactly the same way that you are going to log in to the Destiny system so however you log into a computer um, in the school district that's how you log into destiny and it will bring up your information and so then next to home and catalog you will see the tab my information and you can see if you have books out if you owe fines um, you can see all of your information and so those are just a few features of the online uh, public access catalog we have called fall at destiny and um, I'm really excited to show this to you and I'm really excited to talk about it because there are so many features um, to this and we are we in the libraries are really 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 coming along and um, I I'm so excited to show you this and parents I hope that you will look at this as well we have um, a lot of stuff on the online that the libraries are starting to utilize and so that's our that's our public access catalog so now I'm going to introduce a few books that are I only have three um, for older kids, I have one middle school book, and it's called Wonder by R.J. Palacio. And uh, this book is one of the most amazing books. It, it is a wonder. Um, it's about a little boy who has a horrifically deformed face, and his mother has homeschooled him up until the grade, up until grade five. And he lives in New York City, and he has a mother and a father and a sister and a dog. And he's, in every respect, kind of just a regular kid, except for his horrifically deformed face. And so his mother has to send him to school in the fifth grade. And this is his story. And it is one of the 
most compelling books, you want to read it all in one sitting because you want to get to the end of the book. And um, I, I would like you to try and read this and we can talk about it again. I would like to describe a little bit more of the plot and talk about that the next time we meet. Um, this book, I have two more books. These are for high school kids. Um, this is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, and E. Lockhart is known for her um, Michael Prince. The Michael Prince Award is for the best book in young adult literature, and she was a um, she was a Michael Prince Honor Book for her book entitled The Disreputable History of Frankie Landau Banks, which was a very good book. This book is, if you like a book with a twist at the end, this book is for you. And actually, both of the books I brought have a, an unbelievable twist at the end. And um, We Were Liars is the story of a very, very wealthy family in Massachusetts who, um, a young girl whose family owns an island off the coast of Massachusetts, and they go there every summer. And um, she, the summer she was 15, she had an accident on the island, and she almost drowned, and um, she can't remember exactly what happened. And this book is the story of her trying to remember what happened the summer that she was 15. And really most of the book takes place the summer that she is 17. And there is such an amazing twist at the end that, um, when I finished, when I was finishing the book and they, they revealed the twist, I gasped for breath because I could not believe, um, what had happened. It was such a, um, an unbelievable ending. So this book I read in one sitting as well. Um, it was, it was a very good deceptive lie, I guess we could say. Um, and then the third book that I have is Codename Verity. And Codename Verity is another book with, a, with an unbelievable twist. And the author is Elizabeth Ween. And um, she is an unbelievable author. She writes a lot about the Second World War, World War II. And um, this book is about um, England in 1943. And I don't think that too many people really think about it, but um, there were a lot of women in the the British Air Force, who were merely flying planes back and forth. They weren't um, allowed to be fighter pilots, and um, they were merely flying people. And it, when I say they were merely flying people, they were quite possibly doing some of the most dangerous work that they could do during this time period, because they were flying at night, they were dropping people, um, and those people were spies, they were dropping spies behind enemy lines. And um, this story is the story of a girl who was a pilot and a girl who was a spy. And the girl who was a spy is dropped behind enemy lines, and she is captured for one small mistake. And the mistake was that she looked to the left when she was crossing the street, because the British drive on the opposite side of the street than they do in France. And the Nazi Gestapo saw her and knew that she was not French, even though she spoke impeccable French. And they took her and they interrogated her for months. And the story is a, um, there, there's a backstory and there is a present story to this book. And the twist at the end will again, leave you gasping for air and leave you intrigued and probably will get you very interested in the role of women and pilots during World War II in the United States and in Great Britain because Great Britain had an unbelievable air force that they were using to um, fight the, the forces of, of evil at that time, Hitler and the Hitler and the Nazis. So um, this is one of the, this was a Michael Prince Award book as well. Um, it wasn't the winner that year, but it was one of the award winners. And um, it, I have read this book twice because I read it once and there was so much information I went back and read it again. So I hope that you will think of these books when you're picking things out of your library and you can look in the card catalog if you don't have them at your library and get them. So that is about all we have for today, and um, I hope that you enjoyed um, our visit in the library corner, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.